Hey guys, I'm doing a uh, brief overview of Moravian history leading up to the American Revolution and a little bit about their, their culture and society. They have their origins in the 15th century, a full hundred years before the Protestant Reformation. Uh, started in Bohemia, the regions of uh, Moravia and Silesia, which is present-day Czech Republic. Uh, anyway, 18th century, uh, they suffered religious persecutions, and they migrated from there to Saxony, which is present-day eastern Germany. And there they set up the community of Hernhut. In 1727, they had a Pentecostal experience. The Holy Spirit came down and uh, taught them how to love one another. Uh, from that moment onward, the Moravian Church exploded. They uh, sent missionaries and set up settlements in all over Europe, England, the Caribbean, Africa, and North America. The first attempt in North America resulted in failure though. That was in 1735. They sent a voyage that um, got disrupted by storms. Uh, they were heading for Savannah, but it didn't work out. In uh, 1741, though, they did uh, set up permanently in Pennsylvania, uh, north of Philadelphia, a the settlement they called Bethlehem. And ten years later, they set up in North Carolina, a settlement called Bethabara. And several years after that, they would uh, build Salem. Uh, the Moravians were into piety, and the way they interpreted Jesus' teachings was through a lens of pacifism. Uh, they also decided all their major decisions via the biblical principle of the lot, meaning they would put three pieces of paper in a bowl. One of them would have yes, one of them would have no, one would be left blank. And they pull one out, and whichever one they pulled, that was what God was telling them to do. And that was non-negotiable. They had to do it. Um, a really interesting society. They, they divided themselves up into choirs, like all aspects of their society. The young boys would be in one, the young girls, all the single guys, single girls, all the married people would be in one, but they were the only ones that actually lived alone. They would have their own housing, uh, the, the widows and widowers. The system encouraged uh, spiritual growth and kept them, or also encouraged acceptable behavior and kind of acted as a preliminary local government. Um, Moravians are also um, stressed education and the, um, the importance that they had for, or the important role for women that they had in their faith meant that there was no reason to discriminate against women with education. So women got the same education the men did. Well, probably not the exact same, but... Um, and because of this, uh, a lot of non-Moravian children would go to these schools, which were uh, gender-divided. Um, the Moravian schools offered opportunities that non-Moravians didn't, didn't have, especially for young girls. Economic-wise, the uh, Moravians initially set up an economic system called Deconomy, and in which the different choirs, the members of the choirs would provide their labor and their time in exchange for shelter, food, and clothing. And they used this simple system for 19 years, but it was very effective in one of the only cases where a uh, communal economic system was effective. Uh, the Moravians were craftsmen. They were very uh, practical and industrious. And they had an economy based on trade. But then they also needed to protect their beliefs. And they had an organized um, layout of their communities that kind of reflected this, this uh, desire. They would... Um, place their germane ort in the center of their, their region. The germane ort is another word for their um, 
congregation community. And then they would put land gemeinen, which are called translated as village of the Lord. They put these smaller village land gemeinen around their gemeinde ort, and kind of naturally made the Salem, the gemeinde ort, as the the natural uh, religious government and economic center. And it kind of also put these buffers around it to help isolate Salem from outsiders. Uh, within Salem. They had a large central square, and, and this is characteristic of all um, Moravian settlements, or all congregation settlements. Uh, and the square would be used as a market. It would be used for civic meetings, religious meetings, even a park. Um, they put all their important buildings along or near the center of town, everything that they stressed, like schools and the post office. And they also had a large um, uh, main building in the square. And I forget what they called it, but it was for um, religious meetings and government meetings both. And it was the focal point of the, the community. Switching gears here, um, during the American Revolution, um, Moravians suffered from a lot of mistrust from patriots and loyalists. And they were taken advantage of. A lot of supplies were, were taken from them. And a lot of their young men were impressed into military service. Men would go off and hide in the woods. And if they could escape impressment, they would. But a lot of them didn't. And at war's end, the Moravians would take these guys back. They forgave them for their military service. And um, But the Moravians have something unique. Um, a lot of things unique, but one thing in particular is unique about them is after the war, they were the first to officially celebrate the 4th of July. And this was because the North Carolina governor happened to come through on 30 June 1980, or 1783, and he told them about a prior um, edict that he had where on the 4th of July was to be designated as a national holiday. This left the Moravians like four or five days, but they still, they got everybody together and they prepared for this holiday. And it was uh, marked by a love feast, which is can be religious, but for them it was just a community fellowship and that's that sort of thing. But then they also had what's called Sing Stude. It's just the whole community singing songs. And some of the songs they made, especially for the, the event, and the songs um, were actually the first patriotic songs uh, to be sung on the 4th of July. Um, that, that's about it for the Moravians from their origins to the revolution. I uh, hope, hope you all got something out of this. Thanks.